Good evening, folks. Welcome to the Town of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting for December 9th. I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order now. Um, my name is Mike Valancourt. I'm acting as, as chair this evening. Um, our regular chair, Josh Carver, has some family obligations. Uh, we'll first look to the minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve this evening. Um, the minutes of the September 22nd meeting, we'll take them one at a time, September 22nd, 2015. Uh, any comments on those minutes from members of the board? Hearing none, I uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of September 22nd, 2015. I make a motion to approve the minutes as they are. Second. Second, Second from Michael. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Any opposition? I abstain. I'm here. Same here. And the approval carries. Uh, on to the minutes of October 27th, 2015. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Move to approve. So moved. Second. We've got our second. Any discussion? Any revisions to the minutes? A little item of interest. Sure. Um, in one of the documents that was sent out in our package, the zoning bulletin, yeah. there's a case in here in which the owner sought a variance for a setback. It, it was interesting because it was quite similar to the first item that we passed on. And the decision of the court, which reversed the lower court, held they couldn't have a variance for very similar reasons to which we held they couldn't have a variance. So if people didn't happen to notice that, it was. I thought it was kind of coincidental and intriguing. Worth a read. <laughs> it's Great. only two pages long. Yeah, it's worth reading. <laughs> we'll take that as a point of information. <laughs> we should all read our bulletins. Uh, aside from that, any other comments or revisions to the uh, minutes of October 27th? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes from the October 27th meeting? No, that's correct. Any opposition? We've got three in favor. Fourth in favor. I'm in favor. <laughs> I'll abstain. I wasn't here. I'll abstain. I was not here as well. So uh, the motion carries. Uh, we don't have anything on the old business calendar, so we will move on to new business. And that will be to hear the request of Edward and Sybil McCarthy to reconstruct and expand a portion of a non conforming single family dwelling at 13 Lawson Road, map U8, lot 41. The applicants have a contract to purchase the property. And with that, we will turn it over to the applicants. Acting Chair Valancourt, Board of Members, good evening. Stephen Moore here this evening with Ted and Robin McCarthy. We worked with them to understand the house and the design and the application and the process. And um, as I mentioned, um, at the back, as Ted mentioned at the back of the letter, we helped put the graphics and exhibits together. So I'm here tonight to just walk the board through this in a summary fashion. Uh, first point, though, Ted and Robin have purchased the property, so they now own it. Um, this is one of those properties in one of those great old neighborhoods in town that was built and laid out before there was zoning. The house was built and then Zoning came in and the RA zoning progressed and consumed sort of the whole neighborhood in that area. And that first graphic, I've taken the graphics exactly out of your packages and blown them up. That outer orange line is that property configuration. That yellow line, sorry for the lightness, faintness of it, but that yellow line is the setback. So you can see what that 30-foot setback does for creating a building window in the lot. So that, that inner yellow long rectangle really shows you that little over 1,000 square feet of buildable area that exists in there. So when Ted and Robin came to us and said, we need to solve this issue because we need to pick up a better living room dining room arrangement, we want to get rid of the two unit status that had been used as a two unit. Um, keep the bedroom count, maybe drop one bedroom. 
what we had talked about was making sure that we didn't get into and increase the nonconformity with respect to the side yard setbacks. So hold on to those two side yard setbacks, which are 10 feet to one side here and 18 on the other. And most of that structure does conform on the front yard setback. They then went back, went through some design issues and came up with a floor plan that resulted in the proposal that came to you for um, dimensional relief in terms of the setbacks. This is the diagram that we had included in our package, which again, the dark shaded area is the proposed addition. So there's a small addition on the front that allows us to take what was a garage, was then turned into residential uh, use as a bedroom, and convert that back into a garage. On that end, on the west, so we have a small addition there on both sides, one towards the street and one back. But the one towards the street is no closer than the closest point of the existing building. And on the back side, again, we stayed with that 10-foot side yard setback, so we don't encroach into that side yard. And then increased on the south side to pick up living room and a better dining room in that darker shaded area where the rectangle extends out. And the whole gist of that sort of study and work through was to keep the square footage in that building modest, keep it in scale with this neighborhood, but make it function for them and work for them in terms of a layout. So what we've added in there in terms of total square footage is fairly modest. It's 796 square feet, something like that, in terms of total add-on to the building. Once we'd solved that, we knew we had to thread some other needles on this, which were the existing septic system. The existing septic field sits immediately south of the house, so we had to maintain our 10-foot setback off that, which informed some of that decision about keeping the addition limited 12 feet on the back. And the other piece was to go back and look at shoreland zoning, because a portion of this lot sits in shoreland zoning, so we are um, controlled by the shoreland zoning regulations in this case, what was most pertinent was the percentage of lot coverage. And we've shown that 250-foot setback line, which cuts through the front of the house. So what we included in our package to you were these couple of diagrams that showed that we do not get any closer to the sidelines. We do not get any closer to the right-of-way line at Lawson. But we do expand to the south. But still, we are well away from that most suddenly point of the, the setback. The lot coverage in Shoreland Zone goes up to just a little over 17. I think it's 17.7 or 17.8 percent. The lot coverage outside the Shoreland Zone stays down below 13, so we conform with those lot coverage standards in those two areas. And we came away, after going through that design effort with them, feeling pretty good that we could go through and then meet the criteria that you apply when looking at this type of request for dimensional relief. The responses in our package, we included the exhibits that gives you context, and the responses in the package address the various criteria that you'll consider as you look at this. I think the three things that we talked about as a group that are most pertinent for us. When you look at the lots in this neighborhood, this is the narrowest lot and the longest lot. So it, it has some unique features to it in terms of the lot configuration that ended up resulting in a building window that looks like this. The second piece we looked at and considered was that by not expanding those side into the side yards any further than our existing encroachments. We were making sure that we weren't affecting anybody else's views, either people across the street on Lawson or people walking up and down. So those existing view lines through and down to Pond Cove uh, will remain. The third thing for us was trying to pull that building back to something that looked more like the building should look like from that era. 
So right now, there's quite a mix of windows. With the garage door, and there's that funny little addition piece. So going through this, part of that effort for us was to bring back a uniform window size, door size, and get the layout of that building looking like it really belonged in that neighborhood with the front door fronting onto Lawson. I realize that's not germane to what you're considering, but it was part of that design consideration for us. So, in summary, we've gone through, addressed the criteria. You have those in your responses in Exhibit B, both shoreland zoning, dimensional standards, and the um, criteria within the zoning ordinance that we're applying under. Um, we feel we've been restrained and quite conservative in terms of modest of our approach and keeping our footprint small. And we're here this evening to hear what the board has to say about application and um, hopefully you can move positively on this. And with that, I'll turn it back to the acting chair unless Ted or Robin, you have anything to say. That would be a nothing to say. Thank you. Very good. Do we have any, uh, any questions for uh, the applicants at this point? I do, if nobody else does. Um, these are this is mainly just curiosity or to make sure I'm reading the materials you sent correctly. We have a number, not a number of different orientations. I got it right. On the back of the house, the south side, you're taking down the chimney and getting rid of the two sliders. Is that correct? Okay. And um, so you're replacing that with the sliders above and below. And on the, on the east side of the house, you're getting rid of the door, correct? Correct. I realize these are not very readable, but you hit it precisely. Right. That's what's there right. in my left hand. I apologize. More on that side. Okay. And then this is what's going to happen. Yeah. So shimmy down. Okay. Large doors and openings on the west side of the south side of the Garage doors and other door on the front, and then uniform window sizes. I'm just one little thing. You mentioned you're trying to restore it to the way it looked. The one remaining sort of architectural detail from the original house was the kind of the doorway on the east side with the, I forget the terminology, but the side lights and the a side light and a top part. Right. Did you, did you consider reusing that? Um, we did not because we weren't comfortable putting it onto the front because of the scale on that facade. But I don't know if Ted and Robin, if you had given that any additional. Well, it's, not a, it's probably none of my business. It's your design. But it just, it, as they say, it, the other sort of remaining detail to me at the original house was the proportions, which I thought you did a wonderful job of preserving, sort of, in a sense. But Thank you. I think the, that doorway is kind of nice. I mean, you could put it on the back. I don't know. Anyway, that's all. Thank you. You do have a doorway on the back, also, as we now. do. Anyway. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. I, and I, I'd just like to say that I, I found this application to be um, very complete and easy to understand, and <clears throat> not all the applications we see are, are as well put together as this one. So um, thank you for, for taking the time to thank you. give us uh, all the information that we needed. Um, I, I do have a question, Mr. Moore. You, re you referenced the 10-foot um, the setback requirement from the existing septic field. And I see that the septic field is shown on, um, on the plans. How, how is that located? We, we had two pieces of evidence to go by. We had the HHE 200 that we got from the town. And then we actually went out in the field. One of my staff people went out in the field, walked around with a little metal probe and poked to make sure that we understood where that was. And it was within about 18 inches of where the HHE 200 put it. Great. Um, thank you. It, when, was that, when was that last uh, reconstructed? Or, or when was that constructed, do you, do you know? I think that septic field was replaced in 99. 
Is that? The, the field and the tanks were replaced in 99, I'm pretty sure. Okay. But um, as part of this proposal, because we're expanding out towards the tank, what we've shown on our drawing is we have to install new tanks off to the side. But we did look at that. The field has been rebuilt. It's not the original, it's not the original field. Um, and, and will the tanks be the same size as or the same capacity as the They, they have existing. to be, yes. To conform to plumbing code, they have to be. And I see your, the proposal is to eliminate a bedroom. So in SFN, would, would that reduce the, the design flows, essentially? Yes, it would. If it were to be designed again today. So in theory, I guess the, <clears throat> the loading on the septic system would be less. Than, than it is today, not depending on how the house is used, I guess. But that's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the the Armstrongs did they retained the the front lot, the southerly southerly lot, the one that borders right on Pond Cove? Is that right? Um, they they did not. Okay. Uh, Ted and Robin purchased that as well by a separate deed. Okay. okay. So Ted and Robin still they. Okay. He's right there. Okay. Additional questions for the applicant? Seeing nothing, nothing further, Thank we you. will open this up to uh, members of the public. Anybody have any questions or comments? Please step to the podium. Uh, my name is David Volan, and I live uh, at 17 Lawson Road, and uh, uh, the paper road is in between my house and what the McCarthy's have bought. And I must say that we live in a very family-oriented, friendly neighborhood where, frankly, most people don't even know where their property lines are, and we welcome the fact that kids play all across everything. So every time somebody sells a house to a new person in the neighborhood, we're always a little concerned as to whether they're going to be able to maintain with us the friendly neighborhood we've been living in for over 35 years. The McCarthys were kind enough when they first moved, got into the area to come over and introduce themselves, explain precisely what they were doing, not that they were asking our permission, but they just wanted to make sure that we knew what, what was going to be happening. And personally, I really appreciated that, and these are the kind of neighbors that I think anybody would welcome. Thank you. Thank you, David. Any other comments from the public this evening? Ben, did you receive any submissions? Everything I received is in the packet. Okay. So no additional emails or letters or anything like that? No letters. letters. Right. Well, with that, if there's no further uh, public comment, we will close the uh, period of, of comment and we'll go ahead into uh, board deliberations. Solicit folks' thoughts on the application. Oh, and I should disclose actually, I, I did, uh, uh, folks should be aware that I resided at 13 Lawson Road for a period of about three months, about nine years ago. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I, Katie, were uh, going through a renovation at our house, and, um, and that was a, a convenient place to stay. And in fact, my understanding is that a fair portion of Cape Elizabeth has, has, has yes. rented this home from time to time. Uh, so David, I remember discussing fly fishing with you a little bit oh, while yeah. we were there. Uh, and we were there for about three months. So I, I just wanted to disclose that. I don't feel like, like that has any impact on my ability to, to weigh and consider the application. I wanted to mention it to folks. So you're not very attached to the way the house is now? No, no, no attachments whatsoever. We had a good stay there, but I'm happy to be back in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on the application, folks? Michael was saying it, the application is pretty complete, it's quite complete, and I don't see any problem with it. I, I agree, uh, uh, echoing what these gentlemen have said, we, uh, 
This is a very complete application. It was great to flip through it and see all of our questions answered, see all the dimensions very clearly spelled out. Uh, you obviously went line for line and word for word through the ordinance and, and addressed uh, uh, the particular issues that needed to be addressed and, and uh, seems to me to be a, a clean application and a request that fits within the parameters of our ordinance, so I'm, I'm comfortable with it myself. And if there are no additional comments, I would entertain a, a motion. Excuse me, Chair. Not to get ahead of ourselves. Yes. A motion to approve the application or to go through the process of the variance criteria? Did the variance criteria here apply? No. No, that's what I didn't think so. I, I did see that they were appended to the application. I saw that the, there was some reference to the variance criteria um, as attached to the application. But my sense was that we were just uh, simply dealing with um, 1943B3. And that because we are not looking at actually expanding any non-conformities, then we don't get into the variance criteria. But please, somebody jump in and correct me if I'm, I'm misunderstanding that. Yeah, it's, it's separate from the variance criteria. It's size of the lot, slope of the land, potential for soil erosion, location of other structures on the property and adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site suitable on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Right, which is all per uh, ordinance section 1943B3, which then borrows from 1943B2 for the criteria that the code enforcement officer just referenced. Um, and again, I, I guess I was a little thrown because there was a reference to the variance criteria uh, at the tail end, but it seems like the, the uh, tail end of the application, but uh, I, I doesn't seem to apply. Um, so, uh, sorry, Chair, yes. one more. This would explain why this application is different than the last month's application. And so, for clarity purposes, this is a different application, as it were. Uh, that's a different section of the under the ordinance. Point taken. Point taken. Different standard for sure. So to get back to the original question, are we ready to make a motion? Yeah, I think yes. Unless anyone else. Unless there's any additional commentary, uh, I think it's that time. And the motion, I, uh, as I would see it, would be to approve the request of Edward and Sybil McCarthy of 10 Chipwreck Road, Scarborough, to reconstruct a non-conforming structure on 13 Lawson Road, map U08, lot 41, based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Chair, I would adopt that motion as my own. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Second. Yes. And we, we appear to have a question. Yes. Hey, if you would just step to the podium, please. It's just easier then for the public to actually hear what, what that is. Well, I'm delighted to have at least a chance to uh, thank uh, everybody for the nice comments about our process of uh, going through this. Uh, we have purchased, and that is our address now, 13 Lawson. So if you're creating a record now, 10 Shipwreck Road would not be appropriate. It would be 13 Lawson Road, Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I think we can probably make that friendly amendment to the motion. Uh, and I think we had a second down the line. Yes, yes we did, very good. Uh, any discussion on the motion? 
Uh, seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Right, so that is unanimous. The motion does carry. Thank you, Board. We appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, and this is where we get into the uh, findings of facts. I think I'm supposed to read these into the record, right, Ben? And you could, if you want, you can change that from purchase and sale to owners. Of gotcha. The subject lot. Gotcha. Uh, the finding is fact. Uh, this is a request of Edward and Sybil McCarthy of 13 Lawson Road, Cape Elizabeth, to reconstruct a non conforming structure at 13 Lawson Road, map U08, lot 41, based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, Edward and Sybil McCarthy. Uh, do now own the property at 13 Lawson Road on the subject lot. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone and it is in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District. The non-conforming structure is a single family dwelling with an on-site septic system. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the, of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to, to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure and the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Uh, do we have any additional suggestions on findings of fact from the board? If there are none, I would approve, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the findings of fact. So moved. Do we have a second? Michael, we have a second. Any discussion on the proposed findings of fact? Seeing none, all in favor? Those opposed? That is unanimous. Uh, the motion carries. Thanks again, folks. Thank you. Uh, moving on in the agenda, uh, new business section two, election of the chair and secretary for a one-year term. I'd like to uh, defer on that, um, as well as uh, section E of the agenda, the discussion of the uh, 2016 meeting schedule. I, I think it would be important for our current chair, uh, Josh Carver, to be here for those discussions. So, uh, so long as there is no objection from anybody else on the board. We'll defer that until the next meeting. Any concerns with that? Okay. Do we want to make sure a date is set for the January meeting anyway? Is that, will that be the January? It, it, it'll be the fourth Tuesday of January. Okay. Very good. Aside from that, uh, I think all we have to deal with is the adjournment. I'll, Move to adjourn. There's a motion. Do we have a second? second. <laughs> okay, all in favor? All right, any opposition? Doesn't look that way. All right, we're adjourned. Thanks, folks. Happy holidays.